Yes, yeah, sorry, that last video I did was uh, worked out to about seven minutes, but I'd actually preached for about 20 minutes. What happened was my phone overheated uh, because it was in the sun. So now I've got to work out how to make a shade for my phone so it doesn't overheat in the sun here in the land of Oz. It gets that way. So now I'll just continue where I reckon I left off and uh, finish that message. Sorry about that. Anyway, here we go. Now, I've seen before the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world, and the Son sent the Holy Spirit to bring conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And you and I have to realize that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord and that we're heading down the hell by default. God does not want that for you. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified upon the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He wants to save your soul from a long, lost eternity. Uh, okay, we'll continue the message in uh, Acts chapter 5 and verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the spirit, in other words, he died. And great fear came on all them that heard these things, and the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yea, for so much. Now this was a couple that actually uh, sold some land and they kept back part of the money. They shouldn't have kept back part of the money. They should have given the whole lot to uh, the apostles and they didn't. They lied about it. Uh, then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then uh, fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the Spirit. But the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders uh, wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, and of the rest durst no man join himself to them. In other words, no one dared to join themselves to them. But the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, uh, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirit, or as those that were demon possessed, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, so they were very angry laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. When they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. The high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors, but when we had opened, we found no man within. Now 
when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one uh, and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain and the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them and set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour. I wonder, is he your saviour? You need to make him your saviour this afternoon. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, uh, and so is also the Holy Spirit, whom God hath given to them that obey him. So once a person gets saved, once a person comes to faith in Christ, they receive the Holy Spirit upon conversion, upon their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, upon their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour. They receive the Holy Spirit inside of their body. And that Holy Spirit empowers them to live the Christian life because none of us can ever live the Christian life in and of ourselves. We've got to have the power of God. We've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of our body so that we can actually please God. You see, we can't please God without being born again. We've got to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you want to be in heaven, you have to be born again. You have to be born from above, born into God's family, through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then, took, uh, then, then stood there up one in the council of Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had his reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles for a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do uh, as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. So in other words, it fizzled out. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, he also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them go. For if this counsel or this word be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. You know, if we're fighting against God, who, uh, have a guess who's going to win? God will always win. He's the winner. And the devil is a defeated foe. He was defeated on the cross of, uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ when he died upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. He defeated death, hell, the devil, and the grave. Lord Jesus Christ is the victor over the devil. He's a loser, my friend. The devil hates us. He wants, to, he wants us to go down to the lake of fire and brimstone with himself. There's no need to go there. I'm here to tell you this, Arvo. There's no need to go there. You can be saved if you come to Christ. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. Yes, and to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council 
rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. In other words, shame, to suffer shame for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's such a wonderful person. You need to come to faith in him. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can be in heaven. When this little life upon earth is over, you need to be in heaven. Will you be in heaven? The only way you can be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith in him. Yes, they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing, but they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name, for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And daily, in the temple, that in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. This was after the authorities told them about three times, if my memory serves me right, they told them three times not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. And they just went on out, kept on doing it, praise the Lord for their boldness. They weren't afraid of man, they were more, uh, they were more afraid of God. Yes, they had a fear of God. That's what you and I need, to fear God. And the Word of God says, fear not him that uh, kills the body, and after that has nothing more they can do. But I would rather uh, say it to you, I'm quoting it a bit wrong, but fear him that after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. I say to you, fear him. In other words, fear God. So we ought to understand the holiness and the righteousness of God. The holiness means he's set apart. He's set apart from everyone else. There's no one that can compare unto our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who's become the divine substitute that took the sinner's place upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to scriptures and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's the one that wants to save your soul this afternoon. Are you prepared to come in repentance toward God? That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that God promises you everlasting life. I wonder, will you come to Christ this afternoon? Will you put your faith in Him? Who you know is life eternal? He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you put your faith in Him so that you be, can become a child of God? We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So if you want to be in heaven, you'll have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith in Him for your eternal redemption. He shed His precious blood for us on the cross. In whom we have redemption through His blood even the forgiveness of sins. I hope you understood the message. We're heading down to hell by default. God does not want that. He wants you to be with him for all eternity in heaven. The only way we can be there is through the Lord Jesus Christ. His once for all sacrifice and the precious blood that he shed is all sufficient for all that will call upon his name shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just come in repentance to word God. So I keep on saying that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that God promises you everlasting life. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.